This is, I, I realize that there's an error, but this is uh, um, what each move is. So as I loops over, adding five each time, it's grabbing that next group of five, uh, which represents a move from the list. So instead of, I just cut that so that I can paste it back at any time. I'm going to say make move and then paste that in there. That's the move you want to make. So we're going to go through each one of them. We're going to make a move and then we're going to search deeper and so on. Start by making a move and then we'll say uh, flip. Ah, I need to program this in that we're going to make one more thing. So right underneath alpha beta I'm going to put in a public whoops type that in wrong public static uh, void flip board and this will flip the board upside down now I'll explain that to you just in a second so now we're going to say flip mm. there flip board and go on now I'll explain why I do this flip board and it is not efficient, not perfectly efficient, but I would say that it is very much easier to debug and to uh, fix your program. Um, basically, here's how it works. What we do is with our board, we make a move, and then we rotate the board around and make a move for the opponent. Now, there are several advantages to this. For instance, now, I don't need to, for instance, pawns. Pawns move up, but on the other side they would move down. And so when I flip the board, I can apply the same move generation rules to the opposite side of the board. And I don't have to duplicate my code uh, for the majority of it twice, um, which makes it uh, uh, much easier. So instead of having two pawn move generations, one for white and one for black, um, and then if there was a mistake found in them, then you'd have to duplicate the changes, the corrections that you make in both perfectly, and, and so on. And so I just always flip the board around. I make a move, flip the board, make another move. Um, and uh, it just, I think it makes it easier to program, but uh, I, I would welcome people to change that flipboard once they get a good handle on this program and uh, have ironed out... Uh, all the bugs and, and such that, uh, that might uh, occur. All right, so what we're going to do is we make a move, and then we flip the board so that the other side can make a move. Um, and uh, now what we do is we actually come up with a string, and we call it return, return string. String return string. And that equals alpha, beta, and I'm going to pop in this whole thing. Now, um, I'm going to change these uh, parameters uh, slightly. We'll leave player. Um, we'll change this move. Again, I'll put in this list, I'll just copy this, this substring as the move. Um, instead of beta, alpha, oh yeah, no, I'll leave that. Uh, beta alpha and I will put depth minus one um, and this is a technique called recursion um, if you're not familiar with recursion what it is is it's a procedure that calls itself so the code runs down here to this string and then calls it and then runs it again starting here but obviously depth is one less so eventually it'll only run through so many times before it finds out that depth is zero and it will return and that'll quit that deepest uh, rerun of this program. Um, and so this program is being run multiple, multiple times. It's calling itself and itself and it's propelling, um, kind of like a snowball tumbling down the hill. It just uh, keeps uh, gathering itself and uh, calling itself and such and uh, building up uh, this massive tree from a little piece of uh, code. Um, and hopefully uh, you feel free to do a little bit of research on recursion if you're not familiar with that. But it's basically a method that 
uh, calls itself. And so uh, it can make a code a little more confusing. Um, and these parameters are very uh, picky. This whole uh, algorithm, you don't want to uh, change it very much. Um, now we'll now when we return this, what is this return string going to be? Well, it will eventually return something in the form of this. Notice just like this return does. A move and then a score. So we want to pick the move and the score apart. So we're going to say, what would the value be? Obviously the, the move would be the first four characters. The so substring from zero to four um, would be the idea. And then int value would be integer dot value of a string because obviously we can just grab the last characters of this return string but we have to turn it into a number format so that it can manipulate it with you know multiplying it by three or whatever checking if it's greater than or less than another number um, so integer dot value of and then we'll put in return string uh, dot uh, substring put in oops um, oh yeah five because we skipped the first four and then to the length and uh, there are two kinds of substrings you notice there's a beginning int and then that you can choose a beginning and an end if you just pick the one with the beginning so just five whoops uh, just five like this it will um, put the next one as basically substring dot length. They'll go all the way to the end, and so it's just shorter to uh, just state the beginning. All right. Um, now realize we need another flipboard because notice we flipped it upside down, but now it's returned whatever we need. So it's gone through it again, and now it made a move. Obviously, so it flipped the board and then it goes back to alpha beta here and finds a move from the other side. But now, when we come all the way back, we need to flip the board again right side up um, for the, the remainder here. And we have also made a move. Now we flip it up and then we undo move. And it would be again this same uh, portion right there. Now we undo that move. And the next part of what we're going to do all has to do with values. So I'll try to quickly go through this. Don't want to make this uh, tutorial too long. And in the next one we'll, uh, we'll uh, check out and see if this algorithm actually does what it should. Hopefully it will. What we're going to say is if player is zero and we'll also have an else do this which would be the players one so um, it depends what we do based on whose turn it is and some algorithms I should say out there have a alpha beta and a beta alpha or something they have, they split this into two so that instead of calling itself it calls the other one which calls the first one which calls the other one and so on um, but this is a little more concise, and I think uh, having two is just a little redundant in uh, in most scenarios, and uh, and you have to make modifications to both off often when uh, when uh, debugging and programming. So, anyways, I leave it all in one. So we have this if statement, and then if value is less than or equal to beta. Um, then beta equals value. Oops. Um, I'm just going to... Uh, oh, I'll add one other thing. And then I'll put another statement inside the if statement here. Just make this one big line. And say if depth... Oops. Depth equals... Make sure you always have two equal signs. Equals uh, global depth. Now, we do need to put in a static 
static int global depth equals, I'll put as four. Get rid of that, put that as four. Now, what global depth is, is it's saying, ah, we have to search to a depth of four. So whatever this depth is, which keeps changing, always know that we're searching from a depth of four. And so what this says is if the depth is a depth of four. So basically if you're at the lowest level, um, not if you're so closest to the root, um, that the first line of list, um, this very first line of list, not any uh, future calls of alpha beta, but the initial call of alpha beta is uh, if the depth is the same as global depth. And so when we first call alpha beta, we'll start at this global depth, which would be four in this case, and then it would go, it would do minus one, so three, two, one, zero, and then it would start returning back, bouncing back and forth. Um, so if, what do we do when we get closest to the root, to, that, to the board that you're looking at? Well, then it would be move equals return string uh, dot whoops, that's a comma dot substring and zero comma five. Now we're not um oh, semi colon there. Um, we're not saying list.substring, we're saying the return. So we've just finished and got a return statement, and we're saying now 0 to 5 would be the move. Um, so, but we only record the move if it's a good move, and so that's where this question is. Um, and, and instead of just always saying, okay, return it, give me a move, I only record the move if it's at a beta cutoff. And now I'll place another thing here. This time it's slightly different. If it's greater than alpha, then alpha equals value. And if depth, then return the same old thing. All right. After all of that is finished, we have one more question here. If, we're almost done, alpha is greater or equal to beta, then here's what we do. Then, and now we say if player is zero, oops, do this, else do this. Again, specialized based on player. Return uh, move, it would be plus, I'm trying to think here, beta, I believe. And the other one, copy this, pop it in. Return move plus alpha. Yes. Um, and there is really only one statement. Let's say I got rid of this return that we had. Um, it will have an error. Not because there aren't returns, but because it's possible that it'll go through the entire list and find absolutely nothing that is um, worth returning. Or, it, anyways, it might not return everything, anything, in the end. So once we've completed going through this list and we haven't uh, returned anything, then we're going to say if uh, player is zero, same old statement here, then this, else, this. So that's after we've finished the entire loop um, and gone through every possible move and it hasn't made a cutoff before it went through every move. It's kind of the situation where we are now. Then we're going to say, um, actually, I could have just copied this. I'm just going to copy that and put that there. I believe that would be correct if player is zero, return move plus beta, otherwise return this. So if it hasn't made a cutoff, then at the end, just return whatever it's found so far. All righty. Um, that is about it for my algorithm. Um, I cannot guarantee that it works yet. I will test that out. 
in the next video. So until next time, enjoy Java.